Hi everybody, Mr. Farmer here, and today we're going to be talking about the Phillips curve, short run and long run. Here we go. So, first off, just some terminology. So there is the short run Phillips curve, SRPC, or the just Phillips curve, PC. It's the same thing. We default that the Phillips curve is a short run statement, just like we assumed the short run aggregate supply curve was the aggregate supply curve. So the short run Phillips curve discusses the relationship between inflation and unemployment rate, which you can see are the two axes. It essentially comes down to this. If unemployment, unemployment is low, uh, meaning you're to the left on the x-axis, it's unemployment. So if unemployment is low, then more people are working. If more people are working, they're going to be spending more. If you spend more, then that usually increases inflation. And vice versa, if there's higher unemployment, people don't spend as much, and so typically inflation tends to go down, hence why it's curved that way. The long run Phillips curve, or LRPC, is set at the natural rate of unemployment, the NRU, that whole full employment thing. Why? Because in the long run, the macroeconomics long run, the economy shifts to being at full employment. Thus, it identifies that really the only change in the long run is the inflation rate. Uh, central banks used to set policies to the Phillips curve, but it's kind of fallen out of favor because in the 2000s and, and on, uh, low unemployment and low inflation occurred, and that kind of doesn't go with what's being talked about. With that said, college board still tests on it, which is why you're watching this video. All right, here we go. Important thing to realize. The Phillips curve is simply a reflection on the ASAD graph. It's an observation of the movements. By itself, it doesn't really do anything. It's just saying, hey, we saw this happen. Let's kind of go through a typical example. So let's assume we're at point A from the ASAD graph and on the long run Phillips curve, Jordan Phillips curve. So here we have our A. For whatever reason, AD changes to AD1. Okay, what we know is we go from PL to PL1, we go from Y to Y1, so the output increases. If output increases, the real output increases, well, we can see unemployment rate typically decreases. Okay, what else happened? We went from PL to PL1, so inflation occurred. And so inflation occurred. Okay, so now we're both at point B on the graph. Again, it's just, the Phillips curve is just interpreting things. So, what would happen next? Well, in the long run, the economy self-adjusts, meaning the aggregate supply curve is going to shift over to AS2. So what happens? We have an increase in inflation again from PL1 to PL2. So I just kind of make a little dotted line and say, yep, there's my inflation. And then what else happened? Well, we moved from Y1 to Y2. So our real output decreased, which means we had an increase in unemployment. I'm just mapping out what's going on here. So what's that mean? We're now at point C. But point C on the Phillips curve is floating in space. So how, how do we do this? Well, the Phillips curve itself shifted outwardly. So we can make a quick observation here. A change in the aggregate demand curve moves along the Phillips curve. You can see it from point A to point B. A change in the aggregate supply curve shifts the Phillips curve, and we can see that from point B to point C. Now you can remember that observation, or you can do what I did and just map it out. That's it. Until next time.